Tablighi Jamaat, Part 6. In this portion of this series, I'd like to compare TJs with Salafis, as this is something that is commonly conflated. These two groups, movements, are commonly conflated. The literature on the subject is wide and expanding year by year. So what exactly is Salafism? I will use a number of researchers, specifically one called Piri, who has already been mentioned, uh, a second one called Shiraz Maha, who is based at King's College London, the Department of War Studies. His book is entitled Salafi Jihadism, the History of an Idea. And in addition, I will be looking at Dr. Siddiqui as well. So these are the people I'll be looking at. The graphs that you see, I take them from another author called Dr. Khadija al Shayal. She did her research at Royal Holloway University. The title of her work is Muslim Identity Politics in the UK, 1960 to 2010, Development, Challenges and the Future as Illustrated by the Fate of Freedom of Expression. First things first, I have to mention two errors made by two of the researchers I've mentioned. Dr. Shayal, in the image that she reproduces, uh, was originally done by, I believe, Tariq Ramadan, applying Ramadan's six major Islamic tendencies to the British Muslim context. Then it was taken by Sadiq Hamid, and then it was taken by Al Shayal. Uh, when this section shows Salafi literalism, it has Jimas, Salafi Institute, Birmingham, Islamic Centre Luton, Green Lane Mosque, Birmingham, Al Maghrib Institute, Islam Channel and Press TV. Press TV shouldn't really be there because Press TV is a Shia orientated uh, organisation. Likewise, uh, Dr Shiraz Ma in his book on page number eight, and I can't give you a screenshot because this is a published book. It was published in 2016 by Penguin. He mentions on page eight, uh, scholars such as the Yemeni cleric Ibn al-Qayyim al-Jawziya. This is a mistake because Ibn al-Qayyim was not Yemeni. He was in fact from Damascus. So academics are not always right. And this channel aims to be very exacting. Anyway, in this page that we have from Piri, he says that TJs have been characterized as a movement that follows a Salafist ideology. Ma quotes Wiktorowitz and he states on page number nine of his book that Quinton Wiktorowitz has argued that Salafis can be divided into three broad categories, purists, politicos and jihadis. And then he further goes on and quotes another researcher uh, called Jaret Brahman, and she splits Salafis into eight different categories. And other researchers like uh, uh, Dr. Yasser Qadi, he has his own uh, hierarchy of what makes up Salafis. It's a very detailed, complex issue. But I'll give you, just for the sake of reference, what Ma states about Salafism. This is on page seven. Salafism is therefore a philosophical outlook which seeks to revive the practices of the first three generations of Islam, who are collectively known as a Salaf Salihin, or pious predecessors. Then he quotes the first generation being the companions of Muhammad, who died around 690. 
The next generation are the followers. They died around 750. And then the followers were followed by their followers. They died around 810. So the Salaf, the Salaf of Salihin, the righteous predecessors, were those generations who were from the time of the companions to the year 810. This is all referenced uh, to a hadith which is translated very badly here, but I'll give you the translation that Ma gives. Uh, a hadith is a statement of uh, the Prophet. Of the generations to which I belong, then of the second generation, generation adjacent to my generation, then of the third generation, generation adjacent to the second generation. So this is Salafism, those that seek to adhere to the first three generations from the companions to the year 810. Salafis, again from page seven, seek to emulate the early three generations in their maintenance of Tawheed, which is God's unity, and doctrinal purity, Aqidah. Aqidah is belief. They also constitute Islam's supposedly golden era, and they constitute a group known as Al-Ta'ifa Al-Mansura, the victorious group, or Al-Firqat Al-Najiyah, the saved sect. So it's clearly going back, and he uses quite, Ma uses quite derogatory language. He uses the term progression through regression. That's how he characterizes Salafis. Now, Salafism, how it differs from Tablighism, in my analysis of the uh, state of affairs, is that Salafism, although it has tended in some instances, I think, I think, I think specifically of the Salafi publications sect, uh, cult-like sect in Birmingham, it's generally not cult-like, whereas in previous presentations I've shown how the TJs are cult-like. Uh, second difference is the hierarchy of knowledge. The majority of uh, TJ knowledge and their six points and their five acts, their five tasks, as already mentioned by Dr. Siddiqui, um, is very rigid. And this again leads to the cult-like nature of the group, whereas the Salafis have a wide knowledge base and they take knowledge from many different sectors throughout the generations. A third difference is uh, Tablighis are generally Pakistani stroke Indian stroke Bangladeshi. They do have offshoots in other regions, but they're mainly an Indo-Pak uh, focused group and movement. Four, organization. Salafis are not as organized as TJs. TJs because they have this cult-like characteristic uh, and a rigid program and uh, structure, the six points and the five tasks. And they also have a unique singular source book, the Fazail al-Amal, which as I'll show in the future is quite problematic. They are a lot more organized. There's a lot less to worry about. Salafis are very wide in their outlook. And so there's a lot more knowledge and information that needs to be assimilated. Uh, and number five, access to the sources. Like all cults, the TJs control access and they control knowledge. So they take knowledge from elders who may in some instances be ignorant. Um, and in fact, some of their modern speakers show clear ignorance of the English language and the Arabic language and in the ability to translate literature. Uh, whereas Salafis have a wide access to knowledge and to scholars and to things, uh, all things scholarly and academic. Uh, another difference is the clarity in belief. Salafis are absolutely rigid and clear in what they believe about the lordship of God, the worship of God and the names and attributes of God. Whereas Tablighis uh, are not as disciplined. And so you will have them believing all manner of um, superstitions and things that are not from standard mainstream Islam. More to follow on the Tablighis. Stay tuned.